Tenua Losa Elisha, commonly known as Elish March in West Bengal and Bangladesh, is a rich and luscious feast with much of herring flavor. It is considered as highly priced feast in India, Bangladesh and Myanmar and provides livelihood to the fishermen and fish traders. The hilsa is an important food fish and associated with culture and emotion of Bengalis all over the world. The species has a large market demand and India contributes 15 to 20 percent of its total global annual catch. However, this catch is declining day by day due to over exploitation of the fish. Small fish are caught before they get mature and they are not getting chance to breed even once in their life cycle. On account of its economic importance and public demand, Indian Council of Agricultural Research has taken initiative to culture Hilsha in different aquatic habitats such as freshwater ponds, brackishwater ponds, raceways, cages, etc. through a project entitled Stock Characterization, Captive Breeding, Seed Production and Culture of Hilsha. Seven institutes which are involved in this project are Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute, Central Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture, Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, Central Institute of Fisheries Education, National Bureau of Fish and Genetic Resources, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institutes, and one central university, Vishwa Bharati. In view of the great national and international interest and huge commercial importance, there is an urgent need to conserve the species. Maybe through implementing some conservation measures or maybe through restocking the river through hatchery produced hills juvenile. Major activities entrusted to ICAR SIBA are development of feed for different stages of Hilsha. Grow out culture of Hilsha in brackish water pond. Several researchers have artificially bred the Hilsha successfully, but they have remained unsuccessful in culture and captive broodstock development. Realizing the importance of the species, Indian Council of Agricultural Research has initiated an important project on stock characterization captive breeding, seed production, and culture of Hilsa, Teniolosha Elisha under National Agricultural Science Fund, in which ICAR, Central Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture, is playing a key role by developing growth culture practices of Hilsa in brackish water pond and by developing suitable feed for culture of Hilsa. Hilsa seeds are collected from Moriganga River through bagnet and transported in oxygenated polythene bag or aluminium handi with aeration. High temperature causes stress on Hilsa seed and increases the chance of mortality. Seeds should be transferred to the pond side as early as possible. Seeds are acclimatized with pond water for 60 to 90 minutes to reduce the stress caused due to temperature and salinity change and released in nursery rearing pond. After two months of rearing in nursery pond, fingerlings are released in grow out pond in different stocking density to optimize the stocking per unit area. Ponds are fertilized with urea, single superphosphate, farmyard manure, 
and mustard oil cake to maintain the primary and secondary productivity. The pond plankton status is regularly monitored. Quick lime and dolomite are used at regular intervals to maintain optimum pH. Paddle wheel aerator and water pump are used to create a flow and to maintain dissolved oxygen level in ponds. Supplementary live feed that is co-peepered roti for microalgae are added at weekly interval. In addition, formulated feed at the rate of 2 to 5 percent of biomass daily are offered in feed enclosures. Sampling is done at monthly interval to examine the health status as well as growth of feces. Hilsa attained the growth of 360 to 400 gram, 330 to 345 millimeter from the initial body weight of 1.37 gram and length 52.97 millimeter during the 21 months of culture. Advanced ovary development in female and oozing male have been noticed after one year of culture in brackish water pond. Stomach content analysis of Hilsha of different size group was done to understand the preferred food of the fish. It was found that copepores, radifers, diatoms like Cosino disca species and Pleurosigma species, green algae like Spirogyra species and Eulothrex species were more preferred food items for all stages of Hilsha. Indoor experiment with phyto and zooplankton feeding to Hilsa confirmed that Hilsa fry grows and survives better with mixed zooplankton. Phytoplankton and zooplankton culture unit has been established for providing live feed to Hilsa fry. To develop feed for Hilsa, body composition of different size group of Hilsa has been analyzed. It was found that crude protein content was higher in smaller size group of Hilsa and gradually decreased in bigger size group. Total lipid was significantly lower in smaller size groups and increased gradually in bigger group. Amino acid analysis revealed that among essential amino acids, arginine, methronine, and threonine content were significantly higher, and among non essential amino acids, glycerin content was significantly higher in muscle of Hilsa fry. Fatty acid analysis revealed that polyunsaturated fatty acids were more in smaller size Hilsa whereas saturated fatty acids were more in bigger size Hilsa. Sensory evaluation of Hilsa collected from Hooghly and Padma was done using 9 point hedonic scale. Panel of 50 evaluators was kept for the sensory evaluation. The results revealed that aroma, taste and muscle texture of Padma Hilsa were superior to Hooghly Hilsha. Amino acid and fatty acid analysis revealed that higher aspartic acid, glutamic acid, alanine, palmitic acid and stearic acid content in muscle of Padma Hilsha might contribute to its superior test. Floating feed of 500 micron size was developed with twin screw extruder using locally available ingredients, keeping in mind the nutrient composition of Hilsa muscle.
Initially, keeping Hilsa Fry in tank was the greatest challenge. But with all out effort of the scientists, it was made possible to keep the fish in tank even for three months without any mortality. Hence, it's become possible for the scientists to do the experiment on nutrients a requirement for development of feed. Hills of Fry was acclimatized in a recirculatory aquaculture system with live feed for 30 days. Feces were winned with a dried zooplankton powder replacing live feed slowly for 7 days. Dried zooplankton powder was gradually replaced by formulated floating feed by 7 days. After 45 days, feces were completely wind and they started taking only formulated floating feed. Nutrients requirement study with different level of protein and lipid has been conducted to optimize the protein and lipid content of feed. Breeding has been done through dry stripping of matured male and running female hilsha collected from Hooghly River at Gorakhali, South 24 Pagans, West Bengal. Fertilized eggs were transported and incubated at 25 degree centigrade temperature. After 17 to 24 hour hatching took place and larva rearing was carried out in indoor. After two months, fry 52 mm per 1.13 gram has been released in nursery a rearing pond. Experiment to optimize the salinity of water for rearing larva revealed the survival of Hilsa larva was better 53.33% in 1.5 ppt salinity. This is the first time Hilsa culture in brackish water ponds has been attempted and Hilsa grew up to 400 gram in duration of 21 months. Hilsa rearing in brackish water condition with formulated feed developed by ICAR SIBA has also been successful. Research on captive maturation is on progress. If the fish matures in captivity, it will open up the avenue for breeding of the cultured fish. In view of the result achieved so far, it is expected that the hills may be taken as aquaculture species and the day will come when the farmer will not depend on wildcat hillsa. They can have hillsa from their own pond.